Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. It's your boy Jay here, and welcome back to another video here on the channel. And uh, this whole Devil Joe Tail situation is uh, quite funny. I mean, it, it, it appears to be that we were all tricked by the meat 10 plus years ago when we were all younger and dumber hunters. And, uh, you know, we just all believed it to be fact because it's been all this time and Eclipse still hasn't showed up definitively where Mr. Joe is eating his tail. But... That's neither here nor there. That's not what this video is about today. This video is about other obscure monster hunter facts or things that you can do to and with these monsters that not all of us may know. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, man, let's dive right in to the first fact. All right. There is a deep cut for you guys. Um, did you know that you could fish Gobel out of the water? To start the hunt right so right now you see me gathering frogs up here and frog is what you use to fish the gobel out of the water so you'll see me run into the next area okay now I, I do it extra carefully you know what I'm saying because if he sees you before uh, you throw the fish in the water it doesn't work right so I'm being extra careful I think you can actually just run up to the fishing spot but I want to make sure I get it you know what I'm saying but you walk up right you throw that fish in there or not the fish you throw the frog in where the fish are at right in the fishing spot you throw it in there oh you see gobel down there you see him Ooh, the technological limitations man he was camo but really he wasn't you can see it but you throw that fish in there and then comes up Ooh, chomp and then you can just rip him out of the water and you know proceed to go to town on him right so gobel is way scarier and difficult and more difficult to deal with in the water so pull him out of the water um i remember back in the day man uh you know farming this guy and uh you know we would always pull him out the water if you had a competent team you could probably beat his ass before he got back in the water you know so uh yeah there's the first fact you can fish gobel out of the water to start the hunt since we're on the topic of fishing and using the frog, if you use the frog in um, deserted island when you have to hunt or you know when there's a plesioth around, you can pull him out the water too. Check it out. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Looks kind of goofy because you know it's the Wii U, you know. But pow, you can rip plesioth out the water and you know fight him which is eh, it's a little bit beneficial don't get me wrong but um you know he's a he's a pain in the butt to deal with whether you're in the water or not so you know do with this information what you will but uh yeah you can pull plessy off out the water too in regards to fishing we've got one more monster to talk about and that is the nibble snarf which is basically the land gobel right so peep what i just did i used a sonic bomb to make him come out the water in a specific I mean, come out the water come out the sand in a specific point and he ate the barrel bomb and then the barrel bomb blew up and check this out you can fish him out of the sand right which gives you a super super large opening you and your team a super super large opening to get in there and do damage to the nibble snarf okay another cute little did you know about nibble snarf did you know his uvula is a hit zone by the way you know that you can break and hit his uvula <laughs> crazy monster man crazy monster so uh yeah not only can you do this uh with you know the barrel bomb sonic bomb trick uh if you damage him enough just like you know consecutively he will also do the whole like pop out animation and then you can proceed to fish him out and um yeah go to town on nibble snarf man it's part of the reason why i like fighting nibble snarf so much because um you know you could just lay barrel bombs down and you know make them eat them and then you got giant openings to take advantage of uh that you made yourself and it's super unique to the monster super awesome so much fun to do i encourage you to try fishing nibble snarf out of the sand if you've never done it give it a shot it's a good time okay so that's enough about fishing poles let's move on to the next tool that the hunter likes to use out on their hunts and that is the pickaxe did you know that you can mine Durambarosa's tail yeah you can mine Durambarosa's tail now Durambarosa is a unique monster because it has two tail breaks and in order to mine it you have to break it one time right if you break it the second time you can't mine the tail anymore it becomes a piece like any normal tail and you carve it but after you break it once boink 
you can mine the tail and get a free piece of Duramboros, right? And then boom, there's the second tail break. Now, if you do the second tail break, you can't mine it anymore. You actually just carve the tail like it's any other tail from any other monster. But uh, yeah, you can mine Duramboros' tail after you break it the first time. Dope! All right, while we're still on the subject of pickaxes, did you know you can mine Urugan's back when he falls, right? Or if you, you know, clutch claw him. But check that out. Boom, boom, boom. It's actually a really good way to get lava nuggets, man. If you're looking for not lava nuggets and you're short on lava nuggets, just fight Nurugan and trip him up hella times, right? So every time you get a successful wall bash, um, you can mine him. Or anytime he falls over when he's rolling, you can mine him. This is not limited to one time per hunt. And I'll show you another time where I got to mine this same Urugan. But yeah, anytime an Arugan falls over, you can choose to, you know, whoop his ass and deal a bunch of damage or get your pickaxes out and get to mining, right? Um, and yes, this does work in the older games as well. So yes, have at it, have at it. Maybe the next time you need some ore farms, you can uh, pull up Arugan and get to mining and still have a fun and engaging hunt. That's enough about the pickaxe and mining monsters. Let's talk about the bug net. Did you know if you knock over a Zenogre, you can pull Fulgur bugs directly off of his back? Sometimes you'll even get Zenogre Electro Fur. So if you're farming Zenogre and you need Zenogre parts, consider knocking him over and uh, collecting some bugs and some parts uh, straight off of his back. You can do this multiple times per hunt um, in the older games, but in the new games, uh, even with there's no bug net, you can actually still do this. You just your hunter just walks up and picks through his fur while he's down. But do keep in mind if you are not fast enough and you swing the net while Zenogre is getting up, you will get nothing. It will tell you, oh, you couldn't find anything as Zenogre gets up, which I do have clips of happening here as well. So yes, if you need Zenogre parts. Consider knocking him over a couple times, getting that bug net out, and grabbing some free materials. So last clip, we were stealing things from the monster. But in this clip, the monster steals something from us. Did you know that if you have honey in your inventory and you get grabbed by an Arzuros, he steals a honey from you? And then he sits down in your face and proceeds to eat the honey. Which leads to a super large opening where you can just bash his face in and, you know, do whatever. So... Consider next time you're hunting an Arzuros, and I think Afflicted Arzuros still does this, grab yourself a honey, that way you have it in your inventory, and when you get grabbed, you get a free large opening to take advantage of. While we're on the subject of creating openings, did you know you can get Diablos' horn stuck in specific surfaces of the game? This still works in Sunbreak, but it also works on a few other monsters. Tigrex while charging. You can also get Tigrex to get stuck on specific surfaces while charging. And also, also, here's a deep cut for you old heads out there. Um, Alatreon. That's right, the old Alatreon. If you got him to charge into a specific cliffside that you could climb up on the island, you could get his horn stuck in the wall and that would make it easier for you to break off a couple sky piercers for you yeah so give it a shot give it a shot try to get all of those charging monsters to charge straight into a wall i think tigrex knocks himself out and you you know it gives you a large opening while diablos gets his horns stuck in the cliffside and allows you to take advantage of that free opening another opening you can create while we're talking about diablos is Sonic Bombs! Every time a Diablos goes underground, you can chuck a Sonic Bomb and he'll emerge half out of the ground and give you a nice big opening so you can do some damage, right? Um, a tip for landing this is uh, watch for the tail to disappear. When the tail disappears, uh, chuck that Sonic Bomb and you'll be able to get Diablos stuck and, well, have your way with him. And this still works in the modern games. You can still do it in Sunbreak, but um, you know the monsters now are so damn fast that the opening to do so is way, way smaller, um, which is why I think I don't see a lot of people still going for it, but it is still possible, even though you don't see it often. Um, so yeah, give it a try, give it a try. Pack Sonic Bombs next time you go up against the Diablos and try to create some openings for your team to do massive, massive damage. 
All right, so I got one more Sonic Bomb related tip for you, and then this this will be the last tip of this video. Um, so did you know that Sonic Bombs will make Nagakuga immediately go into enraged mode? Did you know that? So if you toss a Sonic Bomb at a Nagakuga that's chilling, it's immediately gonna get into rage mode. Now, I know you're sitting here thinking, why the hell would I want to piss off a Nagakuga? Because you cannot pitfall trap a normal Nagakuga. That's right, you cannot pitfall trap Nagakuga unless it's enraged. So if, let's say you drop a shock trap, you've already used it, you wanna use one more trap, you know, um, and you know the Nagakuga's in regular mode, but you got Sonic Bombs, chuck a Sonic Bomb, make him mad, then lay down the pitfall, and he'll fall in it. But if you put down a pitfall trap and the Nagakuga's not mad, it's just gonna jump right out of that bad boy. That's how it works. That's just how it goes. That's going to be all of the obscure facts that I have for you today. Um, hit the comment section and tell me about facts that I forgot. Yes, I do know that I forgot something. For example, like Celta's queen and her relationship with her boyfriend. I know about, I know about that. I know about that, but I didn't put it in the video. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you learned something from this video. And I gave you something that you can try on your own just to experience it and be like, yo, this really does work. Um, if you didn't learn anything from this video, I guess congratulations, you're a true Monster Hunter vet and you've been playing these games forever and you're just like me. Which means that you're my people and I love you, alright? So yes, definitely hit the subscribe button down below if you like Monster Hunter content, if you learned nothing from this video. Subscribe so you can teach me a little something about one of my favorite series and franchises of all time. But that's enough talking as usual people, happy, happy hunting. Peace.